Hello, and welcome to another teaching from TorahFamily.org. We are a family-based ministry that believes the whole Bible stands forever, that all of it is based in the Torah, and all of it promotes the Torah. Please visit us at TorahFamily.org for more teachings like this one. We hope this teaching helps you learn and grow in the faith. Men of Yahweh, Chapter 13, Three Things Micah 6, 8 He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does Yahweh require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? So here we see Yahweh showing three things He looks for in our life. If Yahweh wants these three things in our life, how much more should we? That being said, how much do you strive to have these three things in your life? This could and probably should be a verse we read every morning. Maybe we should put it on a wall we see every day. Something I find interesting is how these three things line up with what Yeshua calls the two greatest commands. Yep, that's what I said. Please consider Matthew chapter 22, starting in verse 34. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. The first of the two commands Yeshua is referring to is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, which says, Love Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And the second is found in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahweh. Now, you're probably wondering how the three elements of Micah 6, 8 are found in what Yeshua calls the two greatest commands. Well, let's look a little deeper and see what we can find you might be surprised. First, we see Micah 6.8 says to act justly, not from your opinion of justice, but rather from what is given in the Torah. This truly stems from loving your neighbor as yourself. Just as much as we want true, unbiased justice given to us, we are to give it to others. Now, before you say to yourself, well, of course I do that, remember, it needs to be unbiased. Sometimes this can be easy. Yet, if we are honest with ourselves, there are other times when it can be difficult. The next is to love kindness. The word for kindness here in Hebrew is better rendered as loving kindness. It is also rendered as mercy. It's obvious we all desire to have mercy or loving kindness given to us. However, Yahweh wants us to walk in the love of giving it just the same, to be quick to forgive. Why? Because we know we are just as human as the next guy. Again, this obviously stems from loving your neighbor as yourself. Do you struggle with giving mercy, loving kindness? If so, please remember that the next time you want it given from someone else. We should want to give it just as much as we want to receive it. I know this can be a difficult topic for some. In fact, it can be a difficult topic for all of us at one point or another. If this is something you struggle with, please see our teaching titled, The Need for Forgiveness. Then, lastly, we see Micah 6.8 say to walk humbly with Yahweh. This obviously goes in line with the first and greatest command of loving Yahweh. Yet, 
it doesn't just say to walk with him. It says to walk humbly with him. If there is one thing the father truly doesn't like, it would seem to be pride. The book of Proverbs warns us many times about this. Proverbs 8.13 To fear Yahweh is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Proverbs 11.2 When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Proverbs 13.10 Pride only breeds quarrels, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Proverbs 16.18 Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 21.24 The proud and arrogant man, mocker is his name, he behaves with overweening pride. Proverbs 29.23 A man's pride brings him low, but a man of lowly spirit gains honor. It is believed by many that pride was actually what caused Satan himself to fall. Yet, if there was one trait that stood out the most in Yeshua, I believe it would have to be humility. Now, that's not to say there weren't times when other traits stood out more. There are many times in his life where we see other traits stand out in a glaring way. We definitely see righteous indignation when he drove out the money changers from the temple. We see many traits in his life. Yet, it seems to me the one trait that seems the most consistent is that of walking humbly. This being said, how are we doing in this area ourselves? Do we walk humbly with him? What kind of trait would others attribute to your walk with Yahweh? Would it be as one who claims to have all the answers? As one who is quick to point out the faults of others? Do they see us as one who is arrogantly walking with Yahweh or humbly walking with Him? I'm reminded of what Paul said to the Romans. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. All too often, it seems we are quick to read the scriptures from the perspective that the bad people being spoken of could never be us. <laughs> it reminds me of Yeshua's words in Luke chapter 18. To some who are confident of their own righteousness and look down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you, this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Again, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. The bottom line here is that we need to keep ourselves humble before Yahweh. Pride and arrogance has a way of creeping into our lives, and we have to stand guard against them at all times. Check yourself today. Check yourself tomorrow. Check yourself every day from here on out to make it a point you don't let pride have a foothold in your life. Make sure you are walking humbly with Yahweh. I can't help but think of the words Yeshua spoke in Luke 17. He said, So you also, when you have done everything you are told to do, should say, 
We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. What's your attitude while walking in this life? Do you demand justice but think little of giving it? Do you want forgiveness when you make a mistake but struggle at giving it to others? Could your walk with Yahweh be viewed as humble? Micah 6 8. He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does Yahweh require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? We hope you have enjoyed this teaching. Now, it's up to you to be a Berean and study it for yourself. That's the only way to grow. Until next time, Shalom.